Hello everybody on YouTube. This is Michael Todd and welcome to My Two Cents. If you like this page, I need you to subscribe and I need you to hit like. Okay, we're gonna move right along and we're gonna move right along really quickly. T today I wanna talk about some people that's already been in the news, but um, I haven't had a chance to give my two cents about it, but I'm gonna give it to you now. Um, first, Orlando Henderson of North Carolina, a young brother, he was arrested in San Diego for stealing $88,000 in customers' bank deposits. And what got him busted? He went online, like Facebook and other social media sites, and started showing stacks of cash. He went into a car dealership and pulled out $20,000 in cash and put a deposit down on the 2019 Mercedes-Benz. Um... Impressing people will always get you put in jail. I don't know why people feel they need to go on social media and show everybody what they got and what they're doing, especially when you're doing it illegal and you're crafting and doing stuff like that. I mean, it's as if you were asking to be sent to the penitentiary. Is there somebody in the penitentiary that you really need to see? Or are you just about that penitentiary life and that's what you want to do? That was just dumb, brother. You're 29 years old and you just threw your life away. For what? To impress some people to show somebody that you had stacks of cash and some holy jeans. Oh. Anyway, um, Orlando Henderson from North Carolina. I'm going to give you what they call donkey of the day. You definitely was donkey of the day. Okay, Whoopi Goldberg and Megan McCain had another shot and match. Whoopi Goldberger said, girl, please stop talking. Please stop talking. And Megan McCain said, no problem. I won't talk for the rest of the show. And Whoopi Goldberg responded back, huh, I'm okay with that if that's how you want to behave. You know, it's like, you know, sometimes Megan McCain just goes off on a tangent and she sounds like a, a, a elementary school girl, like a fifth grader, you know, it's, she just goes on and on, and I mean, she she wants, I mean, she wants to talk until the audience starts applauding her. You know what I'm saying? So she'll stay stuck there in a coma while the audience is in a coma listening to her. And as soon as the applause starts, you know, she'll reach a point real quick and then she'll stop. But if she don't get any applause, she'll go on and on until Whoopi Goldberg would have to say, "Okay, girl, would you please just stop?" You know. And that's what happened. They didn't say they're a family and all that other BS, you know, working together, you know, your work family. But I'm sure they get sick and tired of Meghan McCain acting the way she acts. Um, recently, y'all know that is, don't you? That's the Real Heights Wife of Potomac. Um, What's her name? Um, that's Juan on his knees proposing to his wife, ex-wife, for the second time. Um, I kind of like them two as a couple, and she looks really, really good right now. She looks real good. She's lost a lot of weight. I mean, she wears her hair all kind of style, short, long, or whatever. But um, she really looks good, you know, with with that weight off, those hairstyles, and I mean, she she got an attitude where she don't play. She don't take no stuff off nobody, and I like that about her. And from what I understand, he picked her out a, a he didn't buy he got her a diamond ring, but it was the big stone wasn't a diamond ring. It's an eighteen karat white gold, which I like. Um, her, Robin Dixon is her name, and she's married to, um, to Juan Dixon again. And uh, let's see, I think she's forty years old. No, he's forty years old, and he used to be a professional basketball player. And they reconciled, you know, from a twenty twelve divorce. He popped the question at a holiday party in front of family and friends. And he scooped a big, massive pink ring on her finger. The ring is, uh, let me show you what it looks like. That's the ring there, if you, if you can see it. Yeah, he had the ring designed. Um, it's, it's like a pink Morganite emerald cut ring. And Mor Morganite is nice. So congratulations for them. Tom Joyner is retiring after 70 years of being alive and after working in the business 25 years. 
And Tom Joyner is passing the baton to Ricky Smiley, who will be taking over Tom's position. And then Ricky Smiley's a really good guy. I like Ricky Smiley. Um, he always got um, some good word, and he don't bite his tongue. And uh, I'm glad to see Tom Joyner is reaching. You know, when you reach a certain age, 65 and 70, and if you can, if you can afford to, you know, retire, enjoy your money, go on some vacations, you know, um, go visit your grandchildren if you... I mean, if they were visiting, all grandkids ain't worth visiting. You know, um, do something nice for your wife or your spouse, your husband, you know. So, um, congratulations, um, Tom. Mariah Carey, after all these years, it's been 25 years, where finally that song, All I Want for Christmas, it became a number one hit. She, so, it, it makes... This her 19th hit. I thought, just like everybody else, All I Want for Christmas is You. I thought it was a, a, a hit, you know, when it first came out. But evidently it wasn't. So it finally became number one. But unfortunately, Mariah Carey has been in the news on a bunch of other stuff. Recently, um, about not leaving a tip on a $500 takeout. Let me tell you something about, about that. And I'm kind of like with her on that. If I'm spending $500 on some takeout food, why should I leave you a tip? You're not serving me. You're not bringing it to me. I'm, I'm coming in, picking it up, paying for it, and I'm leaving. You know, so the thing about it, I'm, I'm coming to your business. I'm patronizing you. I mean, ain't that enough? Back in the day when I owned a hair salon, and I was, when I was, a, I was a barber, and I was doing, you know, cutting people's hair and giving them a service, I didn't care whether they tipped me or not. I was just glad for the fact that they came into my business, spent their money in my business, paid me for a service that I gave them. And they left. They didn't have to tip me if they didn't want to. And I didn't and I didn't get upset over them not tipping me. And I've even heard that, you know, owners don't even get tipped, aren't supposed to get tipped. That's what I heard. I don't know what book that came out of, but you know, I didn't trip off a, a tips. You know, I was just thankful for the fact that you liked me enough to patronize my business and come in and spend your money. Um, so she spent $500 on some takeout food and they wanted to tip. I mean, come on guys, really? You know, you, you, I, I don't fault her for that. Now, if you want to tip on some takeout food, then you can. But, um, from what I understand, the rule of thumb is, you know, that's not necessary. You don't have to, that's optional. And my option is that I'm coming in and picking it up and you're not going to serve me and I'm going to pay you the $500 and good night. Uh, you know, be grateful. Um, would you prefer for her not to spend $500 in your place of business? Is that what you wanted her to do? Eminem and Nick Cannon have been beefing over disrespect. And it's all centered around Mariah Carey and their escapades in life, love, sex, and marriage to Mariah. Mariah wasn't married to Eminem, but evidently, um, allegedly she had a relationship with him years ago you know, allegedly. Um, so Eminem decides he wanted to put out what I call a rap attack song, rap attack song. And he goes in, you know, on Nick. Now, I never thought of Nick as being a rapper. And if you think about it, um, neither does the subscribers to rap. And I say that because Eminem has 40 million subscribers on YouTube. 40 million Nick Cannon has 297,000. Now, to me, that's considered a skunk. I mean, why fight over a woman who clearly has moved on without both of y'all? It just don't make no sense to me. It's like two little boys being edged on and manipulated into a bullshit fight. And we're sitting back for the shits and giggles of it and we're laughing and stuff. I mean, what will it accomplish? They both have children. You know, the children are the ones that you have to put up and deal with that with their peers making fun of them. You know, laughing behind their backs and making childish antics um, about Nick calling him gay, calling, give, calling him the F word, the B, B word, and then um, calling it, you know, it's just ridiculous. Why is it always a go-to with men that we feel that the, the worst word we can call each other is, is either uh, B-I-T-C-H, uh, F-A-G-G-O-T. 
you know, I mean, is I mean, is is that the best that you got, really? So that's supposed to be the lowest form of disrespect for you to be to be. Does it emasculate you when somebody calls you a bitch or a faggot or a punk? And then they said stuff like, um, "I got video of you." Um, supposedly, someone has video of you. Your your uh, chauffeur. You giving somebody giving another man head in the back seat of a car. I mean, come on, really, guys. Is that unnecessary? I mean, how many people have done that in the backseat of a car? So, so a lot of people are like, you know, it really ain't no big deal. Um, you both, Like I said, you both have children and calling each other all your names. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Uh, the disrespect, you know, that's lame. The first rap attack for men is gender shaming. Mm -mm, Y'all got to do better than that. And, and calling the white boy, you know, saying you're going to end up in a body bag and doing the, the, the gunshots in the background. Come on, Nick. Nick, you're better than that. You ain't got to do all that. Um, it's just over the top. You both are better than that. You both got children. You need to stop it before you get up, get caught up in your feelings over something and, or, and over your insecurities stemming from an uns unsuccessful relationship and marriage. Mariah Carey probably ain't thinking about neither one of y'all. Y'all need to let that go for something really happened that you can't come back from. All right. Beyonce, father, Matthew Knowles is coming out with a book. And he's talking about Destiny's Child and some of the things how he be, was a manager and what he had to do in order to be a successful manager, I guess. But one of the things that he's talking about in the book, from what I understand, is the fact that when Jagged Edge was on tour with Destiny's Child back in 1998, that he got a complaint that the guys in the band were, um, were the guys in, in um, Jagged Edge, they were all like 21 and, and 30 something. These, these, the girls were teenagers. But they were being harassed, and I guess sexually harassed or whatever. And so he decided that he would pull the guys from the, the I don't think he pulled them from the tour, or he just took them off the bus or something like that. But a, a couple of the girls refused to go, and, and they didn't leave. And those two girls was um, Latoya Luckett and Latavia Roberson. And they, those two girls also ended up getting fired. But the lowdown was is that Jagged Edge was schooling these girls about, you know, what a manager's position was. And that really didn't come out. I think Tasha Kay was the f one who broke that dirt. And she said that, you know, what happened is that um, the girls were saying, you know, our manager said we had to do this, and our manager said we can't do that, and our manager does this, and blah, 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 blah. With Jagged Edge, the guys were like, hold up, hold up, hold up. You know, the manager works for you. You don't work for the manager. And see, that's some old school sort of, yeah, just, I can't think of a better word, but that's some old school pimping. Back in the days, the managers would, you know, would run everything and tell the groups what they had to do, where they had to sing at and blah, 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 blah. But it's a new day and time now, and a manager needs to know their position. And I think Jagged Edge, what he was telling the girls is that, you know, no, you need to tell Matthew that you don't want to do that. And this is what you want him to do and blah, 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 blah. But since Matthew was investing all the money in the group and they, they was and the, and the mother was making all the costumes and stuff and the girls weren't paying for anything, they felt that the man, they had to do what the manager had to say. And they were teenage girls, so they really didn't know any better until they met the guys from Jagged Edge. And it was like, you know, even though he's, you know, Mr. Knowles is doing all this stuff. The bottom line is, he's your manager. He works for you. And I don't think Matthew's going to really talk about that too much in his book. But anyway, he let those two girls go. He got rid of them. And they, there was lawsuits in the future in the, in the future that happened. And they end up settling out of court. And, but the bottom line is, eventually, Beyonce fired her father allegedly, and it's, you can go on the, on the internet and look and say that, you know, he was stealing money from her, and um, what else did he do? Um, see, see, managers have a way of like, finding gigs for you, just for appearance gigs you get paid for, and managers can take that appearance gig money and put it in their pocket. Your royalties on your records, managers can be slick about it and put those royalties in their pocket, and Matthew Knowles 
allegedly put some of those royalties in his pocket, in those appearance fees, in his pocket. And that's why Beyonce couldn't deal with him anymore. And believe it or not, I did not know this. This right here. This is the young woman that's on, um, what's that show on TV? Greenleaf. And that's Latoya. Look it. I had no idea that was she was one of the singers in Destiny's Child. I mean, I was, you know, I, I'm into music and everything, but you know, I can follow faces and names and stay on top of all that stuff. Look, I'm the, you know, I'm the senior citizen blogger, okay? You know, I can go back and tell you about some disco days and some um Ozzy Brothers and all that other kind of stuff. But staying on top of some of this of this this um hip hop and all this other stuff. You know, I'm lucky if I can tell you the top 10 um, rappers in the United States. But I gagged when I found out it was, you know, the, the girl on Greenleaf who was, all, you know, messing with the pastor and everything. She was one of the Destiny Child singers, you know. And that's her husband right there. See her? There she is, right there in Greenleaf. You know, the young men in Jagged Edge, you know, they were um, schooling the girls about, you know, a manager's position. And that the manager works for you, not you, not you working for the manager. You know, some slick managers, you know, you know, try to get over on, you know, a new group or a singer that's new in the business because they don't know any better, you know. So, um, eventually the girls, one of the girls ended up going with one of the guys in Jagged Edge. And there's a couple of the guys in Jagged Edge. You can't really see a really good picture of them anyway. Um, yeah, that's a couple of guys in Jagged Edge and those, those two sisters who end up getting fired, you know, that's too bad. Okay. Wendy Williams talked about this in Hot Topics today. Brad Pitt was invited to Jen's Christmas party. Now, um, for all you Brad Pitt and Jen fans, you know they've been separated for a long time. Well, not separated, they've been divorced for a long time. And now Brad is single. And Wendy Williams said that the party that happened in Bel Air Saturday night at Jen's, um, it was reported that Brad was one of the last guests to leave, you know, her Bel Air home. So maybe they're trying to get it back together, you know, after all them years he went out and, you know, tried to discover the world, help the world and build the world up and do things and adopt all those kids. And now he's ready to, I guess, come back home and maybe she's ready to have him back. So, um, good for them. Um, Wendy also um, told a story about Wendy Williams told this story about that when she was in season one of her show Hollywood Reporter invited her to an event and so Wendy went to the event and she said while she was at the um, the Hollywood Reporter event you know this is season one of her of her show okay season one of her show so while she was at the event, um, Anna Wintour, you know, she's the editor of Vogue. You know, she's a British American journalist and um, she's the editor in chief at Vogue. And she's been there since 1988. And she's also the artistic director of Conti Nast, N-A-S-T, Vogue's publisher since um, 2013. And when he said at the event, you know, um, she was snubbed by Anna Wintour. She said, you know, she, she walked over to Anna and um, she was like, um, ooh, um, nice classic bob that you're wearing or something about a hairdo. And when <laughs> Wendy said she walked over to her, she said, Anna is about this short. And, you know, Wendy being tall in her high heels and everything, she was like towering over her. She said that um, Anna turned around and gave her her back, like snubbed her, you know. And right when Anna, you know, did that to her, um, she said that, Katie Cork came up and motorboated her. Motorboat? And I, I was like, what in the hell is motorboat? You know, what, how do you motorboat somebody, you know? And I had to look it up, and I was like, oh, it's like when you, like, kind of like Bogart and get in front of somebody and just push the person out the way and act like they're not even there, you know? And I was like, oh, okay, I know what that is. That's, to me, that's that's called, you know, Bogart. You, you Bogart in your way up front. You know, that's what we called it growing up, Bogart. But she said motorboated. And I remember a time when somebody tried to Bogart their way up in front of me. I just politely grabbed them by the back of their shirt like this, and I pulled them around the back. I said, do you see me standing here? And I looked at them like I was 
crazy. I didn't have no problem. They moved on out of the way. They got back in formation. But anyway, Wendy said that um, Anderson and I bring Kathy motorboated her, and she said Barbara Walters was, was walking around drunk. <laughs> And when he said, you know, this business is too much. This business is too much. You know, um, people make it our business sometimes to make this business too much. The Hollywood Reporter just recently, dot com, not the paper itself, but dot com, um, recently um, called Wendy and a young man by the name of Evan Real, the last name is Real, R E A, or Real, um, interviewed Wendy um, about her show. And when he was like, you know, those you, the people, you know, they, they treated her like that in season one. And here she is like 11 seasons um, later. And she's still here. You know, all those other people. I mean, Anna's still in formation. She's still here doing her thing. But Barbara Walters is somewhere, you know, resting. Um, Katie Couric is um, somewhere probably taking a nap. You know what I'm saying? But, um. Wendy's still here doing her things. Wendy just said, you know, um, all she ever wanted was the respect in the industry. And she said she's not even trying anymore to try to gain the respect. I guess she said, you know, I, you know, I don't, I don't care, you know, whatever happens, whatever ha it happens. But um, she's not even trying to get that respect anymore. She said, you know, she's just going to do her job and do Wendy and that's it. So, I mean, good for you, Wendy, you know. I got a picture of Katie Curry dropping in like it's hot too, if you can kind of see that. That's that's Katie Curry. Can y'all see her? She's at the party trying to drop it like it's hot. Look at her. Lord have mercy Jesus. Go ahead on Katie. There's Barbara Walters. And um, she do got a drink in front of her, but I don't know if that's at the party. But she she's a little happy and she got that drink right in front of her. Excuse me, guys. I got that. See that ring right there in there? That's the, my ring in front of my um, camera. And that's Anna Wintour, the editor of Vogue. Okay, so what's the next story we got here? Oh, this is a goodie. <clears throat> 50 Cent tried to drag Oprah Winfrey. 50 Cent tried to drag Oprah Winfrey behind the dirt and behavior of Russell Simmons. Now, this is my own two cents, and this is the way that I look at it. 50 Cent should have made a telephone call, which is probably highly unlikely, to Oprah Winfrey before he went on a tangent about, you know, her doing a story and being involved in that Michael Jackson stuff, also being involved in the Russell Simmons stuff. But I'm going to tell you why. You know, Oprah Winfrey is a smart businesswoman, and she's been in the game a hell of a long time than some of these up-and-coming people and some of these people that are in the game also. Oprah Winfrey probably had a lifetime non-disclosure and a non-compete contract with those two white men and let me see. Epstein, this is Jeffrey Epstein and Weinstein. I know it's Weinstein and Epstein, those two. She she probably signed a non-disclosure with them, which means, you know, she can't run her mouth and tell their business because Oprah makes you sign those contracts with her. So if, you, so if Oprah Winfrey brings you into her village, she's not going to let you just run around there and get to hear everything and see everything, you know, and then when it's time for you to go, you decide, oh, I'm going to tell this and get this story and I'm going to say all this. There's a lot of things that you do in your personal life and that people catch you at that you really don't want exposed. Say, for example, you come out your bathroom with your bathrobe on and you're at your home and your maid is working there. Let's say that you have a, a scar on your body that's been on your body for forever and you don't and, you, and, you, and you're, you're sensitive about that 
um, it's, you, you have some drama and something tragic probably happened in your life. You never want to talk about it. You never want to discuss blah, 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 blah. Or you're not ready to discuss it. And you're, say for example, your maid seen it. And she'd be like, oh, you know. And next thing you know, your maid, she goes out and she tells her husband. And your, then her husband goes to work and says, you know, she got a long scar going across her breast. You know what I'm saying? That's why people have those type of uh, contracts. It's called a non-disclosure. You can't disclose anything that you see, anything that you hear when you're working for people like Oprah Winfrey, um, Epstein, Weinstein, you know, and they probably make you sign those papers. And so for you people saying, you know, Oprah Winfrey's not, you know, giving up any dirt on Epstein and so and so Take that into consideration. You know, Oprah Winfrey has attorneys on retainer. So they're probably telling her, you know, what's, what's going to work for, for you and your, and your pocketbook is to keep your mouth shut and not say anything about them. Because if you do, they can sue you for all those millions, billions of dollars that you're sitting on. You know, they can take you down. You know, and, and don't tell them what those con con contracts say, you know, how much they can sue her for or whatever. You know, so, and, you know, Michael Jackson... Um, Bill Cosby probably didn't have that contract with Oprah Winfrey. So she, and you know, and Oprah Winfrey being in the business that she is, she, she's in the entertainment business. And so whether you like it or not, all this stuff about 50 Cent, Russell Simmons, and even what I'm doing right, this is all entertainment. And some of this is the truth and and the majority of it, we, we have to say allegedly because we really don't know. I'm the type of person when, when I tell, when I when I give a story, most of my stories have already been talked about in public, and so I really don't have a problem. I don't have to say allegedly on everything because it's already been out there, you know. So, but I'll get into that some other time. But the bottom line is, you know, don't be mad at Oprah Winfrey because um she's given up the story on Russell Simmons and she's not his his good buddy anymore. You know, he did what he did. She's it. You, it kills me that you know. When we call out our own people for, for doing this, 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 this tasteful, foul, rape, incest, molestation, certain men and women, different sectors of our community have a problem with it. Did you hear me? Certain people have a problem when we talk about our own people doing the same things that white people do in their communities. And you said, well, we don't, we don't do it that much. I don't know how much we, we do it because everybody want, always want to sweep it up under the rug. We don't want to talk about it. You want to, want to be discussed. You know, you want to sweep it right up under the table, under the rug. You know, we want to keep it a secret. And, you, and more than anything, you want us to shut up about it. You don't want us to talk about it. You know, people who show out, it is our business if we wish to to make it our business. But some of the stuff is not always our battle. You know, we don't always have to go into battle because we hear about someone's misfortunes. But when it comes to something like this where, you know, you want to attack Oprah Winfrey for doing a, a story on something that, you know, is public information that Russell Simmons evidently did you know, that's just foul. You know, evidently, you know, he didn't have a good attorney. You know, he didn't have open work for sign a, sign a disclosure form, you know, a non-compete or whatever, you know. And I'm going to tell you something, a 50 Cent, while you're still Mr. Director and you still got your show and everything, I bet you got some of your people signing that disclosure form. I bet you that non-disclosure, you got them doing it. You know, so anyway, um, I gave you that information for free. How did I put that? You know, um, uh, anyway, that's my two cents on it. And I gave you that information for free. I mean, that's some, um, um, what you call that, um, coach, coach stuff. Uh -huh. Anyway, Lizzo falls off the table doing the splits this week. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Now, y'all remember when Lizzo did this, she showed her butt in public. And just now this week, she gets on top of a table and she does the splits. Let me see if I can open this so you can see this. You know, I really want you guys to see this, but it just didn't make any kind of sense to me. Why would you jump up on a table, you know? The chair was wobbling when you jumped up on top of it. 
you could barely stand a chair, and then you jump up on top of the table, and you just fell. I mean, she just did a. I mean, she come, like fell right through. It was two sliding tables, and she fell right right through them. Here it is. I want you guys to see this if you can. Uh, Watch this. You see that? This girl is doing too much. She's doing too much. I wish somebody would pull her to the side and they would tell her, you know, Lizzo, calm down. It ain't that serious. Let me get her butt off the screen. It ain't that serious. Everybody feels they got to do the most to be seen. You got to cuss each other out. You got to fight each other. You got to slap each other. I mean, come on, people. Um, I want to thank um, a couple of the bloggers who came to my um, page and said they enjoyed the show that I um, did about the pastors. In, not the pastors, but the bloggers and the beef and all that stuff that's going on. They do a lot of gospel stuff, but anyway... Um, Conscious TV stopped by, and Larry Reed stopped by. So, and um, I appreciate it. Also, um, Timothy Blaine stopped by, and they enjoyed it. So, anyway, um, if you get a chance, people, check my book out. Hey, pudding, some things just don't change. You can get it on Amazon. It'll make a nice Christmas gift. If you enjoyed the show, subscribe, click like. Um, I'll try to stay on top of things and have something for you um, this weekend. And remember, nothing beats a failure but a try.